off for Missouri. I mentioned the numbers for Sophie Cunningham. 27 yeah. points on 9 of 10 shooting. Yeah. What does she do so dangerously and so successfully? Well, she's a tough matchup because she's a big, strong guard. She can shoot you from the outside and does from 3. But in the first game against South Carolina, she took it to the block, baby. And look at the attention that she attracts. South Carolina players all turn and look at her, and when she does that, she still can finish even out of a double team. But I think things are going to be tougher tonight for her again. Does she get attention? Yes, yeah, South Carolina's team, everybody knows where she is. She draws the defenders, and in doing so, she opens her teammates. I think today, tonight, this could be the answer for Missouri, her ability to create inside out. Take this clip here. She has the basketball. South Carolina knows exactly where she is. They step, whoop, left teammate open. Sophie can make that pass and make that play. What does she have in her veins, Coach? Vinegar. She got vinegar in there. Yeah, <laughs> Sophie. Sweet Sophie. There you go. South Carolina, two of their four conference losses have come to Missouri since last season. So we will see you at the half. But for now, round number two, Missouri and South Carolina. Beth Moens and Deb Antonelli standing by with the call. Well, round two, well put, John Brickley. Thank you very much as we welcome you to college basketball and the SEC on ESPN. And the Missouri Tigers, winners of their last two over South Carolina, taking on the Gamecocks. But this time, it's in the other Columbia. And we are here at Colonial Life Arena in South Carolina. Asia Wilson and the Gamecocks getting ready to take the floor. Mississippi State a winner today, as was Georgia. So the loser of this one will fall three games out of the lead in the SEC. And here's what happened the last two times these guys got together. This might be the most interesting matchup of the afternoon. The charge on Davis. That's the charge, Bob. That's a huge play. Sophie Cunningham at three for the win with point four remaining. This has been about defense and scheming and personnel, and Robin Pinchson's team has executed it perfectly. First DQ of the season for Asia Wilson. Don Staley teed up twice and ejected. Big win for Missouri over the defending champs. And so the Tigers are trying to make it three in a row, South Carolina, with other plans as we welcome you to Columbia. Beth Mullins alongside Debbie Antonelli. We've got a lot of emotions running high here this afternoon, Debbie. We've also got a couple of All-America candidates in Asia Wilson and Sophie Cunningham. One of the most highly anticipated games in the SEC in a long time between these two, which have become rivals. We've got two great players. For South Carolina, you know about Asia Wilson. She's 6'5". She dominates both ends of the floor. She blocks shots. She shoots threes. She works in the short corner. Now she's got the handle off the glass, which makes her even more dangerous. And for Missouri, Sophie Cunningham. A big, strong, powerful point forward who can shoot threes, the best in the SEC outside the arc. This is going to be a real lot of fun watching these two match up and their respective game plans. But these are the two best players in the game. 27 points for Sophie back on January 7th and limited minutes for Wilson in foul trouble the last time they got together. They've been ready for the rematch ever since here at SC, and we are underway. Gamecocks in their home whites. Missouri will play a man-to-man -man defense. They'll look to sag. They will gap it and try to play inside out with their defense. Nearly forced the turnover and still ping-pong around, and they do give it away. Missouri basketball. The starting five for the Tigers, a familiar look with Aldridge, Porter, Frerichs, and Amber Smith all joining Sophie Cunningham. Cunningham with the ball, Kleine on the defensive assignment. And already, Debbie, every time Sophie touches the ball, we hear the boos from the crowd. She was singled out as the player that was particularly physical in the first matchup, according to South, uh, to South right. Carolina. It's a different story on the Mizzou side. Well, if you ask Missouri, it was a tough, physical, gritty, very good game plan, well executed. If you ask South Carolina, they were frustrated with the way the game was called, and they didn't make enough shots on the perimeter. Their front line got in foul trouble early. Amber Smith 
And that's a great take by Smith. You pull up early before you get all the way into the shot blocker, Asia Wilson. Wilson fouled inside. That'll be on Sierra Porter, the junior from Columbia. Return to the lineup for them against Georgia, their last game after missing a couple of games with the flu. We watched Missouri workout this morning, and the game plan is very similar to what it was when they won in Columbia, Missouri, and that is to pack it in. You'll see at times six to eight feet in the paint around Asia Wilson. I'm looking for Dawn Staley to counter a little bit and move Asia away from the block some where she's effective in other areas on the floor. And you mean six to eight sneaker feet, as yes. in defenders <laughs> in right. the paint. Jennings turned it over. Well, that was a great dig by Sophie Cunningham to force the turnover. This is what it looked like last time. We'll expect to see a lot of this again. You get four bodies around Asia Wilson on the interior. Frerichs, 10 on the shot clock. Harris jumping into the passing lane for the pick in the lane. Missouri is coming off a loss to Georgia. The most improved team in the SEC is Georgia. They're long, they're athletic, and that bothered Missouri's offensive rhythm. South Carolina has the same athleticism and the ability to do the same thing. It's an uphill pass, it's a steal, and an easy two for Harris. One of the most improved players in the league taking over the starting job at the point. Has had a double-double points and assists in five of her last ten games. And here's Cunningham dropping it off to Frerichs for the elbow jumper. Good penetration. Over help by South Carolina allows Frerich to fill behind the penetration for an easy two. You can play Sophie Cunningham one-on-one. -on -one. You shouldn't need any help off the bounce against her. Bianca Jackson got the start today. Wilson drives baseline and hits. I'm telling you, when she hits that jump shot from the short corner, it is absolutely beautiful. At 6-5, we just don't have many in the women's game that can do that. She's a local from Hopkins, South Carolina, and going down, uh, putting the resume together to be considered the best in school history. And in all likelihood, the number one draft choice Going to the WNBA next summer, and the foul on the shot by Porter. That'll go against Jennings. Good take one-on-one. -on -one. Porter moves her feet. That's just better offense. And now Porter to the free throw line. Missouri, one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. But a miss there. They can D up, they can rebound, they can shoot the three, and they are very good at the line under Robin Pinchton. In the SEC, 69% of their baskets are assisted. They play off the pass. South Carolina's number is more in the 50s, 53. So it's a difference in style. Off the pass by Missouri, off the bounce by South Carolina. Harris is becoming much more aggressive, hunting for her shot here in the second half of the season. She's got five early on. I don't think you can call her undervalued, underrated, any of that anymore. I think Tyesha Harris is one of the best point guards in the country. Here's Cunningham. See, Kleine plays her one-on-one. -on -one. You've got good ball pressure right there. You don't need help. And a foul, trying to get around the screen. That'll be on Donya Kleine, her first. Cunningham, another local kid who stayed home. She's from the Columbia, Missouri area. So Cunningham getting the star treatment right now, getting the booze. Tries the backdoor cut, and it's taken away by Kleine. Look where Missouri is off the three-point line. Look how far Kleine is open. They're going to force her to make shots. 
you got to shoot it with confidence because you're going to get that shot all game. A couple threes early on for South Carolina, and they're going to need some of those to open up the paint. And they're going to get Harris whistled for the foul. That's her first. Trying to get after Lauren Aldridge. This might be one of those games where I really keep an eye on the team fouls, Beth. Usually I don't look up there too much to check it out, but that's three team fouls for South Carolina, just one for Missouri. And Dawn Staley already working on the refs. Last year's national championship coach and soon to be the Olympic team coach is already atop the national side. Getting us ready for Japan. Jackson rebounds the miss. No Lindsey Spann today for South Carolina. Still out with an injury. Wilson missed it off glass. a lot of contact there. See, that's the play where you got to blow the whistle. Yeah. Fans thought she used the off arm to clear out some space. And then the other side of it was their freedom of movement yeah. there. Was she allowed to come off with the bounce? Frerichs in the trail took an extra step. Let's take a look at this right here. It's loud and it is getting physical at the point of screen. A lot of contact. Stick around. We'll see a little bit more of that. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by New York Life. With the right guidance, everyone can be good at life. And Mountain Dew. Do the do. Oh, they got the number one attendance in the nation right here at South Carolina. There they are from outside. We were tailgating earlier today, Debbie. The G Hive Section 115. They're bringing the party here this afternoon. A mean cheeseburger. <laughs> of course, there were a couple of other things there that we did not partake in at no, the tailgate. It was pregame. But uh, just a, a great atmosphere inside and out here at Colonial Life Arena. And. Uh, this is not a good three-point shooter. So look at how Missouri sags off of Donye Kleine. Yeah. And now two core three-point shooters have knocked them down early for South Carolina. And by poor, I mean statistically right. speaking. Yes, I know what yeah. you mean. Kleine, that's only her ninth of the year. She's going to have more opportunities. Yep. Now will Missouri react? Another takeaway. Great right side now. with three turnovers. They started out booing just Sophie. Now they're kind of just booing everybody. <laughs> Tensions ran high the first time these two teams played three weeks ago. Shot clock winding down. They're going to have to hustle. Amber Smith jacks it up and hits the three. Oh, what a big bucket. The one thing about Missouri and the times that I've had it, they never panic inside 10 seconds on the shot clock. They have a great poise and composure about them, and they're all aware. They have a lot of playmakers on the floor. Baseline drive, second chance. Stick back is good from Herbert Harrigan. That's a great sign for South Carolina that Kiki is back in action after an injury. Missed the last three games. for the turnover, and Debbie, that was one of the issues, right, that came up after the last game, the fact that Missouri was the more poised team, and Don Staley actually talked to us at shoot-around today and said, hey, we did not adjust to that adversity and to that environment. We need to do a better job of that moving forward if we're going to be a team that's going to contest for an SEC or a national championship again. Wilson, little fade, and tickles the twine. Really good isolation. Nice work off the elbow and the pinch by Asia Wilson. And I will say, going right. 
Biggest lead here at six. Deep ball again rattled home. This one from Kayla Michael. Formerly Kayla McDowell got married in the offseason. Back to back triples for Missouri. Under three to go here in the first quarter. A couple of teams tied for third place right now in the league. And Wilson on the driver. They're going to call a foul or a jump ball. And they're going to call a foul on the defender, Sierra Porter. Well, this is the right call right here. And she catches it in the pinch. Going left, forget about it. You cannot stop yeah. her from scoring. Sierra Porter lays a hard foul on her. And that was the right call. That's the second for Porter. Asia Wilson to the line. 69% on the season, hits the first in her last two games, 26 points and 27 points. She also hit the boards, and that helped her get to the 2,000 point, 1,000 rebound mark in her career. She's already first in South Carolina history in career rebounds and block shots. First in career, free throw makes and, and attempted. And she's coming close to reaching the scoring mark as well. Third right now in points. And this is like uh, icing the shooter right here. You can substitute. She made the first free throw. Yep. You can bring the sub in. Jordan Chavis coming on for Smith. Asia Wilson now with six. 2-2-1, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. South Carolina will fall back into a man-to-man -man defense, which has been very good early on. Cunningham finding some room, and she hits the three, and some emotion as she heads back down the floor. Last three baskets for Missouri. Three different players with a triple. That gets them within a bucket. You gotta make them put it on the floor. You can't let them catch and shoot. They're too dangerous. And on school record pace, hitting nine per game. And in league play, better than 42% shooting from deep as Wilson misses inside. The other thing Missouri does because of the way they defend Beth, they don't give up very many offensive rebounds. They got a lot of people in the paint to defend. They play very much a sagging, gapping, personnel-related defense. Yeah, how about Wilson right now being up on Cunningham? Step back for Sophie. Over Asia, that won't go. Jackson walked. Well, we got a big Monday doubleheader for you, presented by Joseph A. Bank. First up, Notre Dame taking on Duke at Cameron Indoor at 7 Eastern. And then the Sunflower Showdown, Kansas and Kansas State. Both games available on the ESPN app. Then have the exclusive window tomorrow night. The big women's hoops night will be Thursday. Some great games for you, including UConn coming right here to take on South Carolina. Cunningham, the kick out for three. Wilson had it, couldn't hang on. And Missouri sends one to the glass, four get back. They do not want to give up any easy buckets. Very much their MO and their ID. Cunningham got it. You cannot let them catch and shoot. They are so good off the pass. You know what, Beth, before the Georgia game, in the four previous games, they had assisted on 79% of their baskets. Nobody does that. The Warriors don't even do that. You can't, if you're Asia Wilson, you can't step away from her right there. And Wilson gets into the paint and gets the bounce. Asia's already matched her point total from the first game. She got eight. Last shot right here, last possession of the quarter. Here comes Cunningham. Gets into the lane, had it stripped by Harris. 
Ty checks the clock. The launch in time. Off the iron. South Carolina with the lead over Missouri. One in the books. We knew it was going to be a rough and tumble. We've gotten just that so far. Now we got more exciting women's college hoops coming your way. It's the Thursday night showcase on ESPN. It's number one undefeated UConn coming right here to Columbia to take on the defending national champs. Our coverage tips at 7 Eastern as well as on the ESPN app. A one point lead here for John Staley's Gamecocks over Missouri in their final tune up before UConn comes calling. Dawn has beaten Gino as a player, but not as a head coach. Of course, the championships tilt heavily in favor of the Huskies, and Philadelphia is the commonality. John excited about rooting for her Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl a week from today. She was bragging about that number five Philly jersey that she has that Alshon Jeffrey gave her. Alshon Jeffrey's. Stefan Gilmore, both making appearances in the Super Bowl in uh, South Carolina. On the drive, Cunningham goes to the left hand and lays it up and in. And she's crafty around the rim. And Jackson's got to keep her in front, but that's the best way to guard her. You cannot let her catch and shoot. You've got to make her put it on the floor. She's got eight points early on. Their defense pretty much draws a line, sideline to sideline, and they stay below Asia. They are trying to make everyone else score. So if you had an imaginary line that went sideline to sideline, it would go right through Asia like she was the axis. Nice use of axis. Missouri hot with the three ball at the end of that first quarter. They made four in a row. Smith. The step back and then the duck under follows the shot. And Wilson tips it to his head. He's his first rebound of the day. And the whistle on a foul. Dawn and her, her new dog, Champ, are on the Twitter this week. The Philly John and her boy, Champ, are ready to meet the Patriots in the Super Bowl fly. Eagles fly the hashtag <laughs> there. Hey, that's the luckiest dog in the world. <laughs> that dog is the most spoiled, pampered, had an appointment at the salon this week. <laughs> she got the full car wash, if you will. Everybody knows Coach Dale, and now everybody knows Champ around town. Harris. That's a couple of trips without a touch for Asia. She was scoring in the pinch back to back. Yeah. I'm surprised they haven't gone back to that play. She's gone over to the bench. Did not commit a foul in that first quarter. And Chavis drives right into the post up of Sophie Cunningham. There's no space there, and she's got a mismatch with Jackson defending her. You've got to create space so you can get the ball inside. And Debbie, they're continuing to sag off the shooters and invite them to take that outside shot. Pull up for Jackson, that won't go. You see, without Asia Wilson on the floor, Alexis Jennings now has to be the player that gets the isolation, crashes the offensive glass. She's the feature on the block without Asia. She has one rebound and is scoreless thus far. And the foul reaching over the back. Lily Grissett. Our NBA Wednesday doubleheader has uh, the Celtics and the Knicks getting us underway at 8 Eastern, then the Mavs and the Suns. NBA Countdown gets it going at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Celtics just fell to the Warriors over the weekend. Good matchup of Kyrie and Steph. Good five-second violation. Couldn't get the inbounds. Sixth turnover of the half for Missouri. And Wilson quickly back onto the floor. That's the length of South Carolina that I was talking about, where they can guard one-on-one, -on -one, keep Missouri in front. Good job. They worked on their out-of-bounds defense today in shoot-around. See if they work something here for Wilson, number 22 in white. 
Instead, it's Harris off the bounce and the finish. And Ty Harris, last time took it right at Chavis, right into her chest, drew a foul. This time, there's a little bit of clear out. Because of the way Missouri is sagging, she can take the, the take Missouri to the hole. Cunningham threw a double team, wrapped it around. 10 for Sophie, scoring inside and out. That's the creative shot-making ability. Again, Aldrich got an advantage there. Good call from the bench. Dawes Daly's letting Ty Harris, who's a bigger point guard, try to go one-on-one. -on -one. Good help that time by Hannah Shoots defensively. Frerich can shoot the three as well. Aldridge off the screen nails it. Beth, not only does Missouri pass and get assisted baskets off the pass, they get the screen assist as well. That was a terrific screen by Frerich right there to free up Aldridge. Screen assist is something I wish they kept on the scoreboard, not points and rebounds. Mm -hmm. Jackson for three. So that's three triples for the guards who have been invited to shoot it tonight. And that ties it up. Shoots, took away the angle and dribbled too close to coming in. Frerichs. That's no good, and it's out of bounds to Carolina. I was talking about screen assist, and this is what I'm re referencing. Watch Frerichs right here. She passes, and she goes right into a screen, she, and Harris has got to get over the top of that or go under. Frerichs sets a great screen, two dribbles to the elbow, like you've done it a million times. Beautiful execution by Missouri. Missouri shooting 50% right now as a team. Miss Cunningham will get a breather. She scored 10 of their last 12 points. Victoria Keffert has come into the lineup, and there's Harris looking for three. Wilson with the rebound. Patrick swatted. Again, had a chance, Debbie, there to deliver it to Asia on the block. Well, Jordan Roundtree is really becoming a good player off the bench. For Missouri. Really starting to gain some extra minutes. Good confidence. Smith dragged the foot and walked. Watch right here. Asia Wilson. You see Patrick dribbles right into the post up of Asia Wilson. Victoria Patrick is the fifth option on the floor right now offensively. Well, she wants to go. be the fourth option, I think, Debbie. Move, move <laughs> She's up the chain of command. Okay, I'll give her four. <laughs> back up by three for Carolina. It's going to back and forth first half. Columbia versus Columbia. And Wilson gets fouled on the play. A three-point Carolina lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. Andy Landers, Rebecca Lobo, John Brickley with you in the studio. Still to come, the Land Rover halftime report. Round two between Missouri and South Carolina. Very much evenly matched because the stars have come out to play. I'm really, really impressed with both teams defensively, how they've dialed in to slow down the other team's best players. And only one player in foul trouble, Sierra Porter. No technicals. <laughs> Great game so far. Asia Wilson, eight points. Sophie Cunningham leading the way with ten. We'll see you at the half. Back to Deb and Beth. Thank you, John. Which uh, which Sunday star here is going to join this group? Congrats to Ionescu, a ninth triple-double. Durr continues to score big. And Caitlin Flaherty may be the best player that a lot of the country doesn't know a whole yeah. lot about yet. She might be the Big Ten player of the yeah. year. She might. 
more than Kelsey Mitchell. Yep, who became the career Big Ten scoring leader. Well, Michigan and Maryland are in a battle for yes, first place in that league. We have had seven lead changes, three ties. Neither side's been up by more than six points today. A nice high-low. Jennings, that one won't fall. This is a massive week for both these teams. They've got today's game. They've got huge matchups on Thursday. Missouri will face undefeated Mississippi State. South Carolina will face undefeated UConn. And then South Carolina will meet Mississippi State a week from Monday. And as we turn that uh, calendar over to the month of February, we start talking more and more about the NCAA tournament in earnest and things like seeding and who gets to host first and second round action. It's been a three-minute drought here for Missouri. To the left hand for Frerichs. Two strong dribbles to the midline, and then a spin back with your offhand. Beautiful. She was a, another player that was in foul trouble and fouled out the first time these teams met. Offensive foul going to be called inside on Asia Wilson. Two whistles, both officials have the same call. First foul on Asia. Here's the collapse, look at all the black jerseys. She turns and lowers her shoulder into the chest of Frerichs. Asia at 6'5", knows this is not a shot blocking front line for Missouri. You gotta go right up over the top and score that. Post up on Pliny. Oh, they lost her for three. Carolina got lucky there. The best three-point shooter by percentage in the SEC. Patrick, that won't go. Wilson with the rebound. Put back off the mark. Those are two plays that Alexis Jennings and Wilson missed right at the rim. Cunningham blocked by Wilson. Harris in transition. Tough shot for Asia. Held ball and now tempers are flaring. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Now we're gonna have to hold them on her. Jennings mixed it up with Michael. And Robin pinched it all the way out across the floor to protect Cunningham, who's now hearing it from the crowd. You're, really? Honestly? Dawn Staley is also out at midcourt. Her assistants are trying to get her back to the bench. This is going to take a while. I'm just going to tell you right now. Go to the refrigerator and get a drink and come back. The officials got their hands full on this one. It was a jump ball. Remember, that's what the call was on the floor. It was Michael and Jennings who initially went to ground together. They had some words. There was some pushing and shoving. And then on the periphery of that, there was another little scuffle that broke out. I saw several players shoving on both sides. Yep. This is going to take a while to figure this out. Now, there is a new rule. You used to have to designate who could come off the bench should a scuffle occur. Let's take a look at this. There's the jump ball, OK? And South Carolina is surrounding Michael. So there's a push by Kleine. Jennings and she bumped, and Jennings had to walk away. Well, Kleine pushed Cunningham into Jennings. So what I was saying is you used to designate. Now, grown-ups can come off the bench and try to stop and make peace. The key here, too, is none of the other players, it would appear, came off the bench. 
that would be a major problem. Well, Amber Smith comes in right there to push people off Michael. There's a lot of pushing going on. I mean, Sophie Cunningham literally walks off the floor. Walked right off the court. Not, none of the Missouri players came off the bench. Nobody is coming off of the court for South Carolina. So it was all players on the court, all grown-ups. And then the coaches came out to assist. There's going to be multiple. That play from that angle shows Kleine pushing Sophie. Was, it, was there a fist thrown or just a push? Right, right where she went off the court is the athletic director for Missouri and their radio crew. That, those are the people right there on press row, but those are regular fans that are along the front row. tell you, Beth, I mean, I know this has been a highly anticipated contest. I expected it to be very physical, yeah. but I didn't think it was ever going to at any point get out of hand. That's out of hand. Right I, there. I thought if once once teams were getting frustrated, I thought it would. And, and Dawn Staley's doing her own monitor review over there with Diana Koval, who is her SID. We take you back to January 7th. Dawn Staley was not at all pleased with the way that game was officiated. She said so after the game. She was ejected from that game. South Carolina had one player foul out. Missouri had a couple players foul out. And so this has been brewing a bit here, uh, simmering over the course of the last couple of weeks, knowing that this was back on the calendar. And we've still got two minutes and 18 seconds to go in the first half in a one-point game. Well, there are several things that come into play here, Beth. There's the unsporting, unsportsmanlike foul, and then here, there's the disqualifying foul. Denise Brooks, Lisa Mattingly, and Brian Hall, the officials today. So we have... We have two officials that you see on your monitor across the court, and now the third official is coming over to our side to look at another monitor and determine if players came onto the floor. Now, they are asking, they, they just looked at the Missouri bench, they are asking to see if there is any camera work on the South Carolina bench. So, I, I don't think any players came off the we, bench. We certainly did not see that uh, uh, at all the replays earlier. Not only for the remainder of this game, but we told you how significant, how big this week is for these two teams. Not only do they, are they playing today, they have undefeated opponents that they have to play on Thursday night. If ejections and a one-game suspension were to be on the table, it certainly did not appear to be that way from the footage that we saw, that w there were no punches that were thrown. There was certainly pushing and shoving. So Brian Hall was looking at the monitor on our side of the floor, and I was listening and watching along with him. He found one Missouri player that I believe he's going to report to the other officials did leave the floor. Just for stepping onto the floor and not getting involved in the fray. It's number two, Jordan Roundtree, right, right there. One, two steps onto the floor. But then she hesitates, and but right then she there, comes back, and then, and then Robin back. pinched and pushes her back. Well, 
You remember that football we were tossing around earlier today? The reaction here is they're showing some fans up on the Jumbotron. This has now been a significant delay uh, in this game. The call was a jump ball. That's what started it all. Two right. players going to the deck. They kind of pushed and shoved each other trying to get up off the floor. It appeared that both Kleine and Cunningham came into that and tried to move people away from the pile. And then Kleine and Cunningham exchanged some pleasantries. Neither coach is very pleased. What's going to be interesting, Debbie, is if they if they eject a Missouri player coming out onto the floor, but did they not have a, if, a if camera, have on, a South camera Carolina. on the South Carolina bench, how do they know for certain they don't? That's a good point, Beth, because all they saw, all the our camera angles show Missouri's bench because of where the ball was. Mm -hmm. And the ball was in front of Missouri's on Missouri's side of the floor in front of their bench. And now the composure for all parties involved will be severely tested over the course of the next two minutes and two quarters. Because this atmosphere is going to be lit. Look, Lisa Madeline's got a piece of paper and a pencil. There's so much to write down on what just happened. You saw Don, Don was working some numbers there. Somebody pushed somebody. So there, there they are colliding. That was the first little shoving incident. Now Kleine, number four in white, and Cunningham right there. After Cunningham got hands on Jennings, and then they clipped each other trying to walk by. That shot of the South Carolina bench only shows coaches on the court. Well, when you're the one on the ground, you're the most vulnerable yes. person. Look, I'm not going to make an excuse for either one of them. They both understood what this game meant and what what was going to happen in this game, what could potentially happen, and how important keeping your composure. I mean, you're trying to win an SEC championship, right? You're trying to fight for seeding for the NCAA tournament, trying to get a home game, first and second round. They both understood the magnitude. By that view right there, Kleine's play on, or not play, but her aggressive push towards Sophie Cunningham looks like it's the most aggressive of what I saw. The officials are still still working on numbers and who's in and who's out and who might be shooting free throws. Listen, I got here. Here's it. Look at midcourt right as as the shot widens. I mean, if you're going to get technical about who's on and off the court, Bianca Jackson, number ten in white, will also step onto the court right there. Stepping on the court or getting involved in the that, operation that is two totally be different two things. Two totally different things. And nobody was stepping into the fray with any intent. Look, Lisa Mattingly has covered 17 Final Fours, I think 20 Final Fours. Denise Brooks is a Final Four official. We've got a good crew on this with Brian Hall. But I've never seen Lisa Mattingly go to the paper and pencil to try to write down all that, that they have to adjudicate right here. Information uh, starting to trickle in and uh, 
I, I think they're going to eject Jordan Roundtree for those few steps off of the Missouri bench. That's that could be the the technical way that you rule, yes. but and I know I'm going to hear people say common sense isn't in the rule book, but common sense is a part of it. She wasn't involved in what went on on the floor. If that's going to get an ejection, I yeah. can only imagine how many players we're going to lose then well, in this game. I, yeah, and I, it looks like there will be an unsportsmanlike foul called on Cunningham and Pliny. Those would also be personal fouls. The unsporting fouls would offset jump ball, but there would be free throws for the well, they're technical not, foul on round three. They're not balanced, though. There's if let's wait until the officials come over here and tell us because I want to hear from them because there is offsetting penalties when they're of equal value or gravity or gravity. So Lisa Mattingly will come over and uh, talk to Debbie. The crowd is reacting to the departure of Jordan Roundtree, but they don't know yet that Bianca Jackson is also going to be ejected. That player that we pointed out stepping onto the floor at midcourt for South Carolina. So Debbie just talked to Lisa Mattingly about a couple of ejections and a couple of unsporting fouls. Two unsporting fouls. They offset Cunningham and Kleine. Number two for Missouri, who is Roundtree. Number 10 for Missouri, who is, uh, for South Carolina is Jackson. They both came on the floor. They're eject no, it's 10 for Missouri, Beth. It's not 10 for South Carolina. It's number 10 for Missouri are ejected. So Jackson remains. Nadia Green is the other player for Missouri. So two ejections for Missouri and none for South Carolina. There were two on sporting, they cancel. Two players from Missouri ejected, okay? One technical foul. South Carolina shot two free throws for that. They go to the jump ball, which is point of interruption. It's South Carolina's ball. That's why they have the ball. That's what Lisa Mattingly told me. So Roundtree, and I'm guessing not, which one of the other players that stepped on the floor is Nadia Green. There's six or seven Missouri She's players in the white shirt. Interesting, and they did not send off the player that stepped on the floor for Carolina at midfield. That, that, was, that was Bianca Jackson. Yep. Aldridge banks it in to tie it up. On the drive, Amber Smith gonna be whistled for the block. So let's reset here, okay? Because we got a tie score, we got a game. Two players ejected from Missouri. One, Jordan Roundtree, who does get playing time. Nadia Green does not. But the unsporting uh, fouls are personal fouls as well. Yes. So we need to update the fouls on who has what. That's what's important right now moving into the second half. Cunningham has one personal foul. Kleine has two personal fouls. What's really odd to me is there's contact on the floor, a shove, and those two players stay on the floor, and two that stepped on the court who weren't even involved in the play get ejected. I understand the rule, but I don't like it. Yeah, the initial contact in that scrum was not penalized at all on either side. And Jennings whistled for the foul there, which is significant Debbie, because Jennings just picked up her second personal. Well, that's because those are offsetting fouls. So they're of equal gravity. That's why there were no shots for those. It used to be the old flagrant one. 
for those that are uh, following along that cover the men or watch the men. Wilson defending on Cunningham. Here comes the screen from Ferris. Cunningham baseline, fouled on the shot. Both coaches are going to find a lot about the maturity level of their teams. One of the things that Robin Pinchton told us today at shoot around is they piped in white noise in practice because they knew it would be loud in here. They knew they were going to have to stay connected. Until that play, I thought they had done a very yeah. good job of managing this atmosphere. Well, and Robin didn't take kindly to the comments from South Carolina after that game. She said, hey, in the SEC, we pride ourselves in being competitive and being passionate about the way we play. And it is a physical league night in and night out. <laughs> Sophie Cunningham is a 50 from two, better than 40% from three, and better than 80% from the free throw line. There's only one other player in the SEC that has the 40, the 50, 40, 80, and she missed two free throws. Victoria Vivian the is the other. Yeah, one of the best in the country at that. If you watch what Trey Young went through for Oklahoma's men at Alabama yesterday, that's what Sophie's feeling today. Marked man and a marked woman. Wilson, they have gone over four minutes without a bucket. Cunningham down the lane to the left hand and in. She's got a dozen. What a crafty finish in transition. I thought they almost had a chance for two for one if she could have scored a little quicker, but now South Carolina gets the last possession, and neither team could get their, neither coach can get their team to lock them fast enough. You're going to get something for Asia Wilson here. Final 10 seconds of the half. Harris off the bounce and the kick out. They're going to have to hustle to get something up. Harris beats the buzzer. And no touch for Asia Wilson. The first half comes to a close, tied at 29. Back to the studio, John, Rebecca, and Coach Landers coming your way. Beth, thank you very much as we welcome you into the Land Rover Halftime Report. Andy Landers, Rebecca Lobo, John Brickley, wow, round number two, fight night in Columbia tonight is what we have seen. And again, we got a recap on what has happened here. 217 mark of this second quarter. The fight breaks out. Nadia Green, along with Jordan Roundtree, both from Missouri, they've been ejected. Sophie Cunningham with an unsportsmanlike. Donye uh, Kleine also with an unsportsmanlike. I mean, this just took a totally different turn in this first half. Well, coming into this game, tensions are high because of how physical the first matchup was. I thought the officials did a good job going to the monitor, figuring it out. Unsportsmanlike foul here, excessive and unnecessary. Necessary. Both Cunningham and Kleine deserve that. My issue with this was you eject a couple players off of the Missouri bench because we have a camera on that bench, but we don't have a camera on South Carolina's bench. I don't know if anybody came off. Neither do the officials. So how do you, you heard Debbie Antonelli talk about using common sense. How do you eject those Missouri players? They took two steps on the court when you have no idea what happened on the other end. That's a question that, that's going to be interesting to talk to the officials about after the game. Rebecca the <laughs> Diplomat. <laughs> the Southeastern Conference basketball. There you go. Folks. We told you before it started, they don't like each other. Based on the last performance so we saw. Do? I mean, because that little scrum for a jump ball, that happens in basketball all the sure. time. That wasn't something that should have escalated, but when you come into a game with tensions flaring, yeah. tensions high, this is the kind of stuff that can happen. But it brings up a bigger point, especially for South Carolina. You're the defending national champs. You have UConn coming up on the schedule. You need to have cooler heads prevail in a situation like this. I think without question, because if, you, if it's a fight, and if you're ejected because you fight, then you're not allowed to play in the next game. That's not what happened here. You know, the, the cooler's heads prevailed at some point. <laughs> you're not going to convince but you, him. But you have to be smart because this, this game really matters in the hey, SEC standings. Thank you very much. UConn's coming up, but they're not there. Missouri is the one in the house, 
And that's all that's important today. We'll throw the kitchen sink at them if we have to. And you talk about, you know, the environment in there. Every time Sophie Cunningham touches the ball yeah. from the very Ooh. beginning of the game, 18,000 are booing. That's just raising the tension <laughs> level uh, in, in the arena. All right, so let's just say, besides the fight, we do have a great basketball game in Columbia. 29-29. <laughs> there is a game going on. Sophie Cunningham right now leading the way. 12 points that early foul trouble that we saw in the first matchup for South Carolina. Not the problem here, uh, at least in this first half uh, for the game. You know, the, the thing that impresses me the most is both teams have prepared to slow down the other team's best player. Who is that? Asia Wilson? Sophie Cunningham. They've tried to deny Sophie on the perimeter to limit her touches. They've crowded Asia in close to the basket and made it tough for her to score. Anytime Asia Wilson has gone block to block or has uh, looked to get the ball in the paint, she's surrounded. Yep. And, and that's what Missouri is going to do. She had some success at the end of the first quarter catching the ball away from the basket, whether it's at the pinch yep. post or at the free throw line, and then attacking. When she catches the ball in the post, before the ball's in her yeah. hand, she's got eight feet around her. There's she's a got fort. So, yeah, <laughs> Fort Wilson. She they can't see out. Completely surrounded. So, they're going to have to make some adjustments in the second half. And one of those is going to be get Wilson on the move, get her facing up, yep. because she's really good when she does. All right, let's just take a breath. Let's just catch our breath in fact. Wow. That was fun. <laughs> he likes it so much. I know. All right, That's let's keep it. it. Welcome back to Women's College Basketball. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Missouri and South Carolina, and we have a dandy. Tied at 29 as we get set to start the second half. Beth Mullins along with Debbie Antonelli. Tensions we knew were going to be high coming into this game because they had just played in a controversial game about three weeks ago, and Debbie tempers flared there in that second quarter. A couple players ejected a couple more unsporting fouls. Yeah, so it's a really unfortunate situation that both teams lost their cool here. It's a jump ball on the floor. Extracurricular activity. Players come in. And then you're going to see Jordan Roundtree for Missouri and Nadia Green, who is in a white shooting shirt, step on the floor. Those two players are going to get ejected. But because the officials, and if you see in, in the middle of all that, Kleine and Sophie Cunningham involved, and there was a significant shove there, they just got on sporting technicals. This is Bianca Jackson, who steps on the floor as well, because, as Rebecca noted, there was no camera on the South Carolina bench. You couldn't adjudicate the South Carolina bench. It's unfortunate. It's not fair. So a couple players from Missouri ejected. Cunningham was assessed the unsporting foul, which is also a personal, as was Donye Kleine. Ironically enough, the two players initially involved in the scrum that held ball, uh, neither was assessed any foul, and it did not appear that either one should have. I think the uh, scrum in the middle of the floor, if you will, should have had higher level penalties on it than two players that stepped on the court. So you say, yes, there should have been fouls on. I think Kleine should have gotten a higher degree. Yes. Uh, and I think they should have been able to look at more. They should have figured out how to look at more angles. Yep. Off the fake, Frerich gets the layup. OK, so now I am sure both coaches made sure that their teams were locked in on the next 20 minutes because what has happened for Missouri doesn't affect their rotations that much and it certainly doesn't affect South Carolina's rotation but mounting foul trouble is something to keep your eye on. No problems to speak of in the first half and as you referenced the two players uh, that were ejected for Missouri one was a reserve and one didn't play much at all so now here is the first significant foul issue, it is the third on Sierra Porter, the starting front line player. And she departs for the Tigers. That's a travel. And it's because Missouri brings significant help. It is an all out triple team because Sophie Cunningham turns her back to the player that she's guarding on the perimeter and digs in. A couple of teams tied for third behind Mississippi State and Georgia in the SEC. Every cut is bumped. Every motion and movement is challenged on the floor. 
Viney on Cunningham. Sophie drives, pitches to the far short corner. Rebounded by Asia Wilson. I'd like to see Asia Wilson catch the ball in the pinch again, which is the elbow. She was successful in the first quarter. She did not score in the second. It was 0 for 4. Right in there where she is in the middle of the floor. She has a nice screen and roll to create some space for Harris. That snaps a six-minute drought dating back to that second quarter for the South Carolina offense. So, Beth, you have to go to who you trust. And for Dawn Staley, I know she trusts Ty Harris to make plays at the top of the floor. Frerich's blocked. Wilson got another one. Harris driving into traffic. Ball hits the ground and now comes out to the Tigers and they've got a breakout. Cunningham trapped by Jennings who will let her go. Smart play by Jennings. Just to let her hear footsteps, not to try to make a play on that. Cunningham's 14 leads all scores. And keep in mind with Asia Wilson with just one personal foul. Let's see how aggressive she can continue to stay as the game goes on. And Debbie, you've talked openly about Asia Wilson probably at midseason as the national player of the year, and, and she needs to put her stamp on this game, doesn't she, she in the second half? She needs to work hard to get the basketball in the space where she can make plays. Short corner, high post, rip it off the glass and initiate up the floor. Cunningham. Wilson with another good block out. Got seven boards. Harris, back to Kleine. Well, Wilson had the defender buried underneath. They didn't get to him. Harris will hit over the top. 13 for Ty. Fifth three of the day for South Carolina. And they're going to get Harris for the foul, her second. In rhythm, top of the floor. That's the spot on the floor that South Carolina doesn't score very many points from on the top. They score from the wing and in the paint. That's why you don't see Missouri guarding the top of the floor very much. So much for freedom of movement in this game, Beth. Yeah. And the walk before the shot on Amber Smith. You're supposed to jump to the ball. I don't see anybody jumping to the ball. What I see them doing is jumping to the cutter and jamming them. That's like the way the game used to be called. And when we talked to Dawn Staley about the physicality, she actually referenced uh, the good old days where she used to play against Katie Smith all the time in the <laughs> ABL. Listen, Katie Smith knew how to play. <laughs> with the basket and a three-point lead. So now who does Missouri trust to make a play? Smith, wild scoop shot. Wilson with her eighth rebound. And that's the way you got to throw it high off the glass against the shot blocker. That was Frerichs defending on Wilson. It's just going to be the first on her. Displacement is the other word that we like to use when you're adjudicating the post. Now the officials, I think, are going to go back over to the monitor here. Let's take a look at this again and see if this is... Uh, Displacement. Watch. Wilson's 22 in white, Ferris 22 in black. Frerichs is going to pick up the personal foul. What the officials are looking at to see if there was extra uh, elbow off of Asia. And right there, they're calling the foul on 
Frerichs, and that's what you're supposed to do, call the first foul. That is on the educational video that we all watched at the beginning of the year. And they're gonna say there was nothing flagrant about it. So just a personal on Frerichs. Keep in mind, Robin Pinchson was last year's SEC Coach of the Year and has done a terrific job with her team. Losing the game to Georgia, she said was on her. She didn't feel like she had her team prepared to go against that kind of length. And Georgia's the most improved team in the league. Wilson. Scoreless now for almost a quarter and a half. She got some good advice, didn't she, from her son Blake this week, getting ready for this environment. 11-year-old Blake Pinson said, if they're booing you, Mom, you just got to play better. <laughs> and Robin passed that on to her team, in particular Sophie Cunningham. Off the bounce, Wilson able to bother another shot. That's a shot clock violation on the drive by Kayla Michael. Under five to go, three-point game in South Carolina. There's been plenty of drama in the two meetings this year. That was on January 7th in Columbia, Missouri. Dawn Staley got ejected from that game, a Missouri win, and then midway through the second quarter today, a little brouhaha opens up, some pushing, some shoving. Two Missouri players ejected for coming off the bench. And uh, two unsporting fouls, one on Missouri, one on South Carolina. And that was the extent of it. All of that resulted in, I believe, a one-point swing on a free throw for South Carolina. But it has been tight all day long. Sophie Cunningham leading all scores with 14. Asia Wilson has not scored since the first quarter. Now they start this set with her on the wing and they dive her to the block. Now that's a much better set and Hannah shoots with a big time play defensively. Oh, got the swat on Asia. I like that set though. Move her away, yes. dive her to the block. You can dive her from the wing. You don't always dive from the top. Slice cut. Cunningham lost it out of bounds. She and Pliny have been locked up all day long. I and occasionally Asia Wilson on. I like that set also, Beth. Robin Pinson coming out of the timeout with a little slice cut to pin to uh, Sophie Cunningham going with her right hand over her left shoulder. Each That's usually a play she makes. Each coach getting their star a touch. Jennings, that won't go. Jennings remains scoreless tonight, 0 for 4. Here's our big Monday presented by Joseph A. Bank on the men's side for you. Notre Dame, Duke, and then Kansas, Kansas State. Also available on their ESPN app. That's going to begin Monday at 7. The Thursday women's showcase, UConn right here at South Carolina. Wilson got a block, and that's going to be a travel because came back down on the floor with it. All of a sudden, Missouri now continues to try to challenge Asia Wilson around the rim. And she is 6'5", and she only has one foul. She is going to try to block your shot. <laughs> She's fourth best in the country, Debbie. And the best they've ever had here. It's Tom Harris. Her game right now, Beth. She's making all the plays for South Carolina. 7-0 run for the Gamecocks. Cunningham, good use of the screen, but can't hit it. And Wilson fouled on the rebound. First on shoots, Wilson gathers her ninth rebound. with 15 points to lead the way. Here she is, ball in hand. Oh, 
Look at how they sag around Asia. You can't get the ball in there right now. You got to make that shot. Liney does. You got to shoot it with confidence. 10-0 run. Timeout Tigers. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. South Carolina starting to pull away, Debbie. Well, look at Kleine right here. In rhythm, not being guarded, no one even near. She's got time to have a cup of coffee over there in the corner. <laughs> Six triples for South Carolina. They are beating Missouri outside the arc, which isn't something we had anticipated, and they're currently on a 10-0 run. But that's where Dawn Staley's team has seen the greatest growth, is their ability to shoot with confidence. She expects Kleine and Jackson, when they're on the floor, not to be what she calls, quote, rhythm killers. You can't just hold the ball. You've got to score it. And Kleine puts up a lot of extra shots, I will say that. She's usually the player I see in the gym the most when I'm here. Ten on the shot clock. Working inside, Frerich's double team. Held ball. It's going to go to Carolina. Sports Center tonight on ESPN comes your way after the X Games with Kevin Connors and John Anderson. They'll have a recap of uh, the best of Westbrook and Simmons. What's the biggest challenge for Tiger moving forward? And uh, Super Bowl coverage with Tom Brady versus Father Time. And coming up later tonight on Sports Center. Two post players posting up. You don't see that very often. Foul on Wilson over the back. Be the second on Asia. Well, both coaches wanted consistency, and that call right there would be consistent with the one we had down here on the other end where Asia Wilson was a benefit factor of a foul. Missouri's trying to get its mojo back. Shoots calling for it up top and draining the three. First bucket in six minutes for the Tigers. Hannah Shoots hit two triples the last time these two teams played off the bench. There's a great duck in. And a terrific pass. If you don't throw that pass in there, that foul may not get called. That was a terrific look inside by Harris. Second foul on Frerichs. See the timing of that duck in from the top? You can't bring any help. And South Carolina had overloaded the strong side. Wilson gets it into Jennings. That's, That's going to be an offensive foul. And she slammed into Frerichs. That's the second time right into the, the chest plate of Frerichs. And that's three for Jennings. That will get Herbert Harrigan back onto the floor. For all you young post players out there watching this game, you have to have a go-to. And you've got to be able to counter when the defense takes it away. Missouri has been taking that away by sitting on the left shoulder of, of Jennings. Shoots again. Short. And a breakout for Carolina. They've got numbers. Harris will circle back around. Pliny over penetrated and got into trouble. Shot is blocked. And here's the breakout for Cunningham. Good D by Frerichs who got that started. Tell you what, Jordan Frerichs, it might not show up in the stat sheet, but that kid's going to need a double ice bat when this game's over. Red he shirt. is battling. Senior from Quincy, Illinois. Wilson, off the ball fake, quick to the right side. Draws the foul. This is the way you get easy buckets. You D up and get a stop. Frerichs blocks it into transition. Sophie Cunningham leaks out for an easy two. That's the second time we've seen her have a layup here in the second half. 16 for Cunningham, and now Wilson to the line. And her first point since the first quarter. Nearly a two-quarter drought for Asia. And yet they have maintained the lead. Other guys have been picking up the slack. 
Some good outside shooting with Missouri packing the defense in on Asia. And an offensive rebound. Oh. Well, building saw Asia open on the block. <laughs> Tiny weak side, they'll get another chance. One shot right here, this is where Harris's IQ is top notch. She saw the shot clock, called for the ball. Final seconds of the third. Harris will pull up. One chance for Missouri, short. 42 to 38 as we head to the fourth quarter in South Carolina. Well, we got another good one coming your way on the Thursday night showcase on ESPN. The undefeated UConn Huskies taking on the defending national champs. The Gamecocks of South Carolina coverage tips at 7 Eastern, as well as on your ESPN app. UConn continuing to roll. They get to 20 and 0 for the 11th time in school history for the 11 time champs. And Dawn Stanley's crew has an opportunity to knock off two unbeatens in their next two games with UConn and then Mississippi State. Mississippi State atop the conference right now at 8-0, a game up on Georgia, two up on South Carolina, Missouri, and Texas A&M in the lost column. Missouri held to just nine points in that third quarter. They really lost their way offensively. Deep three, and that will go for Michael. Really good poise, very composed. Good spacing, they get the high ball screen, which Harris gets over the top and allows the pop. That's what's dangerous about Missouri. All the post players shoot the three. They really generate a lot of space on the floor. Herbert Harrigan from the elbow. Good box out by the Tigers. They've only been out rebounded twice all year, but they are behind Carolina on the glass tonight. No whistle on the drive by Cunningham. And the other thing, Missouri hasn't been to the free throw line very much. Wilson tried to muscle it up and in. Held ball. Going to stay with South Carolina. That's where Asia Wilson, going over her right shoulder, left hand, it just needs to drop it in the bucket. You know, just drop it in. It's a finesse play at the rim at that point. She is just 3 of 11 from the floor so far tonight. Going to get another touch here, surrounded by four jerseys, and Wilson draws the foul. That one's going to be on Sophie Cunningham for digging in. See, right here, watch the feet in the paint. I mean, that is a huge crowd to have to play around. Four players all in help. Five players highly aware of where Asia Wilson is. And they do a good job. They don't let her turn over her right shoulder. Sophie Cunningham's got to have better discipline there than to reach in and foul. You're making Asia Wilson go over her left shoulder. That's what your defense is designed to do. Second foul on Cunningham. A double-double now for Asia Wilson, and they've got another possession. This is Missouri's pace too, Beth. I mean, 43-41. There hasn't been very much offense in this one. They score more to their liking. Herbert Harrigan for three, and she got it. Wow. Back yeah. on the floor after a nasty knee injury. That's only her second of the season. triples for Carolina. On the drive, Cunningham, that won't go. Well, they got Wilson. Asia pinning the defender. Going up strong. The Missouri couldn't get organized. Quick struck by South Carolina.
And if you're wondering, no, the crowd didn't leave. Cunningham, baseline, jump, stop, and finish. Good take. 18 for Sophie. It off. Shoots, rebounds the miss. I know you just hit a three, young one. However, let's not get too antsy. Let's not get too excited. <laughs> Cunningham tried to wrap it around Wilson. You know who's been really quiet for Missouri on, who's come to check in is Amber Smith. Big Monday presented by Joseph A. Bank tomorrow night. Doubleheader on the men's side for you. It'll get underway at 7 o'clock on ESPN with Notre Dame Duke and Kansas, Kansas State. You mentioned Amber Smith. Five points, a rebound. And she's got to do more in the first game against South Carolina. She had a double-double with 20 points and 12 rebounds. That was a career-high 12 boards. Yeah, she is a player with a multiple skill set. Played inside last year, played on the perimeter this year. Capable of playing either forward position for Missouri. And Sophie Cunningham's getting a break. She won't be over there for very long. Harris. Sophomore for the Noblesville, Indiana. Putting together a big season, possibly an all-SEC type of season for the youngster running the point. There's only a couple of point guards in this league that I think answer the three W's as South Carolina puts on their press. The three W's, who to get the ball to, when, and where. It's a combination of analytics and instinct. Back to shoots. Frerichs on the drive, got by Wilson. Four-point game, we approach six minutes to play. And see, Missouri is built for this pace. Yeah, this is their kind of game. Set the score, get organized, set their defense, guard personnel. The axis is Asia, everybody gets below the ball. Wilson, short on the shot. Scrack for the rebound, held ball. He's gonna go to Missouri. As, as close to the basket as Asia Wilson has caught the ball tonight, if you take a look at her assist numbers, it's a big fat zero. So while the collapse comes, she's definitely looking to score. She hasn't looked at all to pass it back out. And she's missed 10 of her 14 shots tonight. Hands on from Patrick, whistled for the foul. It's her first. Cunningham is back on the floor for Missouri. Cunningham trying to post up on Barney. Frerichs. Here's a chance for Smith. Way up off the window. So they turn down a good shot for a contested shot. But it went in. It's two in the scorebook, and it's a two-point game. Coming up on five minutes to go. Patrick. And it comes right back out to her. I mean, that's what Dawn Staley put Victoria Patrick on the floor to do. I mean, that's her job. 12 offensive rebounds now for Carolina. Wilson with the skip. And he missed a couple of outside jumpers there. Smith. Here we go. Back to back buckets for Amber, and it ties it up at 49. Amber Smith time. Hey, 
baseline drive. Wilson there to clean it up. And in. And a takeaway. Dawn Stanley wants a timeout. Let her players catch their breath. Two-point lead for South Carolina. Amber Smith starting to find the groove for the Tigers. And Asia Wilson never stops working. Cleaning up the glass in the finish. Got a big finish coming, John. A two-point game, 4-0-1 to play. Sophie Cunningham, 18 points. Asia Wilson, a double-double, 14 points, 13 boards. Offensive rebounding, a big factor for Carolina. And with that in mind, Robin Pinchon will get Sierra Porter back onto the floor with the three fouls. Well, the most offensive rebounds Missouri's given up in SEC play is 13 to Alabama. They already have given up 12. They're one of the best defensive rebounding teams in the country, but Porter back on the floor could help solve some of that with those three fouls. She's only played seven minutes in the game. That is the first basket for Alexis Jennings. Ferrets. Porter trying to post up. Here's Amber Smith. Porter pulled off the bench, has it stripped away. Missed a couple of games with the flu, but she did play 16 minutes in the Georgia game in the loss in the last game. And only seven so far tonight with the foul trouble. Harris, Twining, Jennings probing. And gets it to go! Wow, back to back for Jennings, having not scored until the last two possessions in the game. That's what you call a good, hard foul, so they don't get it up on the glass and make them earn it at the free throw line. There's nothing wrong with the lawyer making this play right here. Lauren Aldridge, the first year law student. That's a hard foul. Harris, a 73% free throw shooter, gets the first. Seven unanswered points here for Carolina. And a seven-point lead, 2.18 to play. Loser of this one falls three games out of the lead in the SEC. And both teams have an undefeated foe awaiting them on Thursday night. Harris defense on Aldridge all night has been terrific. Cunningham drops it off for Frericks. Hard off the back iron. Sophie goes right to the three point line on that offensive rebound. Cunningham, they got her on the flare. And then ran into some trouble. Good defense by South Carolina. This could be a really tough possession right here. Missouri's got to get a stop. Comes Kleine off the stagger. Get the ISO for Harris. Five on the shot clock. The skip. Bianca Jackson. Offensive rebound again. Jennings has it blocked. Shoots with another big play.
going to stay with Missouri. 102 to go. And Robin Pinchton, I think, wants a timeout here to get things together. We will take a 30 second timeout. Be right back. Chick Extreme 3. Three flexible blades that uniquely adapt to any contour for optimum comfort. For any twist or turn, life hands you. Chic Extreme 3 and Extreme 4 with four longer lasting blades. What makes DiGiorno Crispy Pan Pizza different than delivery? Pan, 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 pan. Pan, 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 pan. You bake it fresh in its own pan, giving our DiGiorno Pizza a crispy, caramelized crust. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Another raucous crowd here at Colonial Life Arena, over 12,000 strong, number one in the nation in attendance. And they've been making noise from start to finish. With 102 to go, a review at the table to see who the ball went out of bounds off of. The initial ruling was it would stick with Missouri. This is a tough angle to be able to, to determine or overrule the play the call on the floor, which, as you said, is Missouri's ball. I don't know if you can see from that angle if there's enough evidence there to overturn it. Let's look at this angle. It looks like Ty Harris did hit it because yeah. you could tell by the rotation of the basketball. Watch the rotation of the basketball on, this ang on the other angle. This angle right here. Yeah. It looked like she might have got a fingertip on it. I don't, I'll tell you what, our, our, gonna see enough to change our crew has done a pretty good job yeah. of trying to come up with all the angles that we've needed today. Of course, we didn't have every angle that was needed for the scrum in the second quarter. Extended timeout here for both clubs. Now, Robin Pinchston did call a timeout. And Missouri has three timeouts remaining, and South Carolina has three, if the board is correct. Possession arrow is with South Carolina. Missouri, by the way, has not attempted a single free throw in this second half. Only four in the game. South Carolina 10 of 14 at the line. So other than the, the obvious issue in the second quarter, it's been somewhat clean, albeit a physical evening. And Missouri's only hit two threes in the second half. Carolina has clamped down the defense. Cunningham on the inbound. That won't go. Frerichs under a minute to play and a foul. It'll be the fourth on Alexis Jennings. Expect a, a little bit of pressure by Missouri after this these two free throws. And there you go, the first free throw of the second half for the Tigers. Trying to get this to a six-point game. And that will halt what had been an 8-0 run over the last five minutes for Carolina. Ferris gets a pair. And now Don Staley wants to call the timeout. She can advance the basketball and see which side of the floor she wants the ball on. Well, one of the big stories, certainly, uh, the three-point shooting for South Carolina. When you're packing in the defense on Asia, somebody's got to knock them down. This was early, Kleine knocking down a triple top of the floor. Watch the rhythm with which South Carolina shoots these with. They step into each one of them. And the versatility, Debbie, that's five different guys have hit a three today. 
Not necessarily their forte with the likes of Wilson and Jennings in the interior, but when they needed it today, they got it. They'll play UConn here on Thursday. Missouri will head home to play undefeated Mississippi State on Thursday. And then the first place Bulldogs will be in here next Monday night. Jump ball. Gonna call a jump ball. The possession will stay with the Gamecocks. It's a jump ball. And a foul underneath. Missouri still has, that's their last foul to, to give, according to the board. I think the board is behind. They still have three timeouts up there, and we, that's right, three timeouts. Yeah, now they're going to yes. say, yeah, it was not a shooting foul, so they'll set her up under. Right. That's the last foul to give. a good free throw shooter. It's a sophomore with some poise at the point. That's a tough call with the amount of time on the floor. I mean, do you want to run, rely on your defense or do you want to put one of the very good free throw shooters on the, the line? I'm not sure that Robin Pinchton wanted to commit that foul. Certainly not against Harris. Yeah, better choices. Ty knocks it down. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little token pressure here by South Carolina. We've seen a little 2-2-1. The only issue with that is you open up the backside threes with the way Missouri shoots a three. Now, Missouri doesn't need a three right now. And a quick timeout for Missouri. So they can advance under a minute, of course, in the women's game. You can advance it up to... Just beyond midcourt, seven-point game, 51 seconds to go. Here's what's at stake in the SEC with both Mississippi State and Georgia winning already today to stay ahead of South Carolina, Texas A&M, and Missouri with a couple of losses. LSU, a really big win for them over Tennessee today. If you're South Carolina, you do not foul. You do not give up any threes. You do only have two team fouls if you're South Carolina. So I don't think you want to start giving fouls. I, you definitely don't want the lead. You don't want to foul. You don't want to yeah. give up a three. January 7th, Missouri upset South Carolina. It was the biggest win of the Robin Pinkston era when the Gamecocks were ranked fourth in the country. And now Carolina trying to avenge that. And they're struggling to get the ball inbounds and they'll have to burn another T.O. Let's check in with John in the studio. Beth, just a reminder underway over on ESPN News. UConn going on the road to Philly, taking on Temple. That game will move over to ESPN2 at the conclusion of number 11, Missouri, and number 9, South Carolina. Beth, Deb, back to you. Thank you, John. Well, we anticipated the, with two strong defenses, Debbie, that they would be able to have an impact in this ball game. And, uh, Either side has shot over 40% here in this second half. They have had to grind it out for everything. Asia Wilson, 14 points, 14 rebounds, four block shots. Cunningham, 18 to lead the way for Missouri, although it's been a struggle for her in the second half. That last out of bounds play was too slow developing. They got to get the ball in right here. They don't need a three. Almost picked off by Wilson. Amber Smith was open for a while up yes. the top. 
Double teaming Cunningham. Smith has it. Chavis. That won't go. Cunningham rebounds. And then she's fouled underneath by Klein. Now to inbound the ball under the basket. Now they get to run a baseline out of bounds play. They just throw it on Klein. Got to really execute. To yep. Cunningham tried to get it back to the inbounder, and the pass is picked off. Tigers. Good from James. Two big buckets from her late. And now a free throw to add to the lead. All five of her points, I think, here in the fourth quarter. Timeout to advance the ball. And that'll be it for Missouri. Their last timeout. They do have a possession arrow. Sometimes you can catch them sleeping. Like, I thought they had a transition opportunity up the floor. It looked like they were trying to advance the ball. I'm not sure I would have given them that timeout. Instead, just try and push it up the floor. Yeah. You're, you're only going to lose a second or two anyways, right? Right. And uh, now you've got to worry about inbounding the basketball when you've had strug yep. you've struggled all game inbounding the basketball against South Carolina. You don't have any more timeouts. Let's, let's go back to the studio right now, John. All right, Beth, underway over on ESPN News. UConn looking for their second true road win of the season, matching up with a Temple team already out to an early 5-0 advantage. That game moves over to ESPN2 at the end of Missouri and South Carolina. All right, John, we've got 38 seconds to go here in Columbia. Carolina, a win would get them to seven and two in the league. Missouri would fall to five and three. And that's two in a row for Missouri. And next is at home on Thursday against Mississippi State, who is unbeaten all year and has leads the SEC in many offensive numbers for a defensive guy in Vic Schaefer. And Victoria Vivians is having an All-American like year. They got to 22 and 0 today with a win over Ole Miss. They got a hustle to get the ball in. Back to Aldridge for three. That's good. And now Don Staley with the timeout. It's a big week. Right here for South Carolina basketball with UConn coming in here on Thursday and then a roadie at Mississippi State next Monday night. Both those games on the ESPN networks for you. And then they still have Georgia to come How about in that? February. How about Joni Taylor? Give some props to what they've done down there and the good job that she has on uh, the first reveal. They were number 16 with a potential hosting opportunity, first and second round in the NCAA tournament. Now, the next reveal will be coming out this Thursday, yeah. right? Won seven in a row. They're in second place in the league. The only bad loss they really had was Texas at home. But Nikki Caldwell, Nikki Fargus at LSU, we should give a shout out to yeah. as well, knocking off Tennessee today. The inbound to Jennings, and she's fouled. Jennings made one of two last time she went to the free throw line. Well, without any timeouts now, Missouri has to advance it. Now, this is where they can be dangerous in transition, getting off a transition three, which they have not made a transition three all game. Jennings one for two at the line.
You put Chavis in one corner, Sophie Cunningham in the other. These are two shooters. Now you really open up the court for Aldridge to be able to dribble drive up the middle. Put a little token pressure on her. Aldridge, short rebound, Asia Wilson. Foul by Frerichs and Asia to the line. Dawn Staley is still upset. Well, they have to anticipate that Missouri's going to foul, right? Uh, that was a play on the ball. I, yeah. I can't believe that's what she's upset about. I'm not Must really sure the other end. what she's upset about. She misses the first. That was a play on the ball. It's a foul. Okay. No big deal. So Wilson with the second. She could just be posturing for the next mm. game. You know, Gino, Gino is coming in here on Thursday night. <laughs> Through the elevator door. Oh, there's a foul on Harris that they missed. Rebound, South Carolina. That was a push through the screen. Robin Pinkston's turn now to uh, have a discussion with the officials. First free throw is good. And South Carolina has its biggest lead of the night. Inching closer to the win. Crowd on its feet. Cunningham, no good. And that'll do it. South Carolina beats Missouri 64 to 54. And a South Carolina player was down. I think Kleine was injured on the screen on the final play, down on a knee in front of the Missouri bench. And Robin Pinchton was right over there, the head coach for the Tigers, trying to help Kleine get up. She ran into the screen on the final play. And the coaches, some of the coaches there are hugging it out. And the players are going to get the South Carolina players back in line for the handshake here. Sixty-four, fifty-four. the final. South Carolina beats Missouri. They improved to 7-2 and two in the SEC. And that was Kleine who got caught up in the screen and appeared to injure her shoulder right in front of the Missouri bench. Number four right there. Coming up next, we got more college hoops for you. UConn and Temple for Deb Antonelli and Beth Mullins. Thanks for joining us in Columbia. A 10-point Carolina win.